glory to Jesus Christ, who we're reading the Catechism of the Catholic Church. We're on part one, profession of faith. <coughs> Excuse me. Chapter three, man's response to God. And that's in... Uh, <clears throat> and uh, Faith and Understanding, number 156. This is page 42 in the second edition of the Catechism of the Catholic Church, 2016, and it's uh, published by Libreria Eritrice Vericana uh, and in, nine, in yeah, 2016. And this is a 2019 reprint. And you can get this also from uh, the USCCB, the United States Conference of Catholic Bishops, publication number 7-649, Washington, D.C. And um, <clears throat> so let's pray in the name of the Father, the Son, Holy Spirit, amen. O heavenly King, comfort of spirit of truth who are everywhere present and filling all things. O treasure your blessings and giver of life, come dwell within us and cleanse our souls, O gracious Lord. <clears throat> holy God, holy mighty one, holy immortal one. Holy God, holy mighty one, holy immortal one, have mercy. Holy God, holy mighty one, holy immortal one, have mercy on us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the heart of your faithful, and enkindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your spirit, and they shall be created, and you shall renew the face of the earth. Let us pray. O God, who by the light of the Holy Spirit, instructed the hearts of the faithful, grant that in the same spirit we may be truly wise and ever rejoice in his consolation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. So, faith and understanding. Oh, before I do that, I should say that you can also get this, not just from, in paper, the Catechism of the Catholic Church, but online at www.usccb.org, that's the United States Conference of Catholic Bishops, slash site, slash default, slash files, slash flipbook, slash catechism of the Catholic Church, or www.vatican.va, catechism of the Catholic Church, in English, and go into that. And a free PDF drive, a free download of the ebook of the Catechism of the Catholic Church from Catholic Culture, Catholic Culture. Faith and Understanding. 156. What moves us to believe is not the fact that revealed truths appear as true and intelligible in the light of our natural reason. We believe because of the authority of God himself who reveals him, them, who can neither deceive nor be deceived. From a Dei Filius, that was from uh, Vatican I, uh, three. So it also the uh, the act of faith that we make. God can never deceive nor be deceived. He's omniscient, but uh, he's all good, so he can't be deceiving. But it it, it he can uh, he can uncloud our consciousness. Uh, but we have to cooperate with grace. What moves us to believe is not the fact that revealed truths appear as true and intelligible in the light of our natural reason, which is also true, but we believe because of the authority of God himself who reveals them, who can neither deceive nor be deceived, so that the submission of our faith might nevertheless be in accordance with reason, to again, faith and reason, and the, from the, there's not a, a an antagonism between authentic faith and authentic reason. Uh, if if it's created, that's the heresy of fideism. Say so, you know that reason, quote unquote, whore reason is to be uh, despised, and the more absurd, the the better. But uh, we are set in the paradox of 
dealing with the eternal and the infinite, which is always, see, there always seems to be, in, from our little box that we are looking out at, uh, at the infinite and the eternal, there always seems to be contradictions. But it isn't true. They're paradoxes. They're truths that are two sides of a truth. And... Uh, And also so this, uh, what is called rationalism, which is also, <clears throat> I'm going to say, if you can't look at it at a microscope, you can't look at it through a telescope, you can't <clears throat> deal with it through a Petri dish or a test tube, then it, it's not really real. But of course, everything that's worth living for, uh, you can't get, in, uh, get the information in those ways. It has to be, uh, when we're talking about love, we're talking about hope, we're talking about uh, uh, everything that's uh, mental in, in, in life. That's, but uh, it's so much, oh, that's, uh, that's all brain chemistry and all this stuff, that's all it, it boils down to, literally boils down to. But for us, we said, no, there is the realm of the spirit, there is... Uh, love does conquer, and uh, and there are uh, dimensions far beyond anything we can really imagine, and God and and the reality of the infinite, the eternal, which the reality of the infinite eternal is God. He's the only infinite and eternal being. <coughs> so, so that submission of our faith might nevertheless be in accordance with reason, God willed that external proofs of his revelation should be joined to the internal helps of the Holy Spirit. So there's evidence. So, but uh, we have to fit the evidence together, but still we have to take that step in trusting God <coughs> in all of this. The joining of the internal helps of the Holy Spirit. That's again from uh, De Filius 3. Thus the miracles of Christ and the saints the prophecies, the church's growth and holiness, and her fruitfulness and stability, are the most certain signs of divine revelation adapted to the intelligence of all, again, of De Filius three, and they are motives of credibility, motiva credibilitatis. So they're not, you know, proofs, again, in the sense of the test tube sense of proofs, of, of, of you know, te of testing. But it can be tested and, and endures the test, the test of time, the test of, of, uh, the test of persecution, the, the test of, of uh, a, a logic, the logic of love. So there are motives of cre credibility, which show that the ascent of faith that uh, we talked about a lot about uh, St. John Paul Newman's uh, a book, The Ascent of Faith, in this, is by no means a blind impulse of the mind. So it's, uh, you know, it's, <coughs> but it, <coughs> it's not blind faith, it's faith which it's uh, the eyes of the intellect wide open. So page 40, 43. 157. Faith is certain. So we have that, the, uh, the intensity of the trust of God, where we're certain that he is trustworthy, and what comes, authentically comes from him is true and is, is totally reliable. Faith is certain. It is more certain than all human knowledge because it is founded on the very word of God who cannot lie. So it's founded on God. So of course you can say, well, also uh, the revelations of the uh, the existence of God, the uh, the nourishing quality of God, etc. Uh, you can get that through nature, <clears throat> but you can only go so far. We need uh, direct revelation in Holy Scripture in tradition in the Church. 
To be sure, revealed truths can seem obscure to human reason and experience, but the certainty that the divine light gives is greater than that which the light of natural reason gives. So St. Thomas Aquinas in the, the Summa, <coughs> the Summa T, as they say. <coughs> Ten thousand difficulties do not make one doubt. Again, St. John Newman. So difficulties, we can have difficulties, let's say, in uh, dealing with the, the problem of pain, the problem of evil, the uh, persistence of evil, the, uh, that uh, evil isn't immediately punished and good is not, <clears throat> that, you know, the, the sickness of, of children. <coughs> there are difficulties in that. But our reaching out in faith uh, transcends doubt. 10,000 difficulties do not make one doubt. So this thing, uh, John Henry Cardinal Newman, Apologia, apologia Pro Vita Sua, the uh, uh, apology, but apology not in our sense of, of, uh, of uh, saying you're sorry. It's the uh, sort of exposition, it's his it's, uh, explanation, his defense uh, of his life. So for, uh, that was in 1878. Uh, Saint uh, 158, this is still page 43. Faith still seeks understanding, fides querens intellectum. Faith seeks understanding. But also understanding steps out in faith in, in every area. Of, you know, so if I'm acting on faith, even if I'm testing the faith of, of something, the, of the trusting that this is true or something like that, that even when I test it, that's, you know, there's a, an aspect of faith in that. Faith seeks understanding. This is St. Anselm. St. Anselm. It is intrinsic to faith that a believer desires to know better the one in whom he has put his faith. So the more we trust God, the more we want to know God, the more we want to know about God, and the more we want to know God personally. And um, his ways and his teachings and all this, how to live in God. Better to know the one in whom he has put his faith and to understand better what he has revealed, a more penetrating knowledge will in turn call forth a greater faith, increasingly set fire by love. So the more we experience, uh, the more we throw ourselves upon divine mercy, throw ourselves upon uh, the divine love, uh, the, more, uh, the more we understand it, the more we study it, the more we apply it, uh, the more we grow in love and the more we grow in love of God. The grace of faith opens the eyes of your hearts to a lively understanding of the contents of revelation, that is, of the totality of God's plan and the mysteries of faith, of their connection with each other and with Christ, the center of the revealed mystery. The same Holy Spirit constantly perfects faith by his gifts so that revelation may be more and more profoundly understood. In the words of St. Augustine, I believe in order to understand and I understand the better to believe. St. Augustine's Sermon 43, uh, comma 7, comma 9, Patrologia Latina, 257-258. I believe in order to understand. And I understand the better to believe. So again, the, the faith, because we're approaching this with certainty and trust in God, uh, that can endure any testing. <clears throat> but only if it's really open to a, a life of prayer and a life of, of, of committing to, to trying it out, trying out the faith, putting it into effect. So, you know, you can learn to swim, out in, you know, on a, uh, a park bench 
or a, <laughs> but uh, it's only really effective when it's in the water. The same Holy Spirit constantly, uh, the, uh, the totality of God's plan and mysteries of faith, of the connection with each other and with Christ. So the whole uh, pattern of faith is, is like a, a, a string of yarn. It's all connected uh, to it. So it all you know, comes in. So you, you wit a, uh, knit a pullover or something like that. It's all connected. And if you pull, just if you want to pull things out, then you end up unraveling the whole thing. It's a, as as they say, uh, uh, the the faith is a, the sit down supper of the Lamb. It's not a smorgasbord. It's not a cafeteria. The whole, it's the whole. Faith in Science one fifty nine. Through faith, though faith is above reason. There can never be any real discrepancy between faith and reason. So if there is, there's something about wrong on, on one or the other sides, or both. Since the same God who revealed mysteries and infuses faith has bestowed the light of reason on the human mind, God cannot deny himself, nor can truth ever contradict truth. That's again De Filius at this time four. Your faith can it is there was it Averroes or uh, Ibn Rushd, I can't remember. Um who uh, put in this he said, Well, there are different truths, like there was theological truth, this philosophical truth, there's this uh, you know, physical truth of the natural sciences. And they don't have to be in accord with each other. So but uh, the Christian reality is that there's one truth. And it, uh, of course, this doesn't mean that the uh, a source of truth, this, a theological source of truth, such as the Bible, uh, has to uh, that or that the, the physical sciences have to be analyzed by uh, assessing the Bible, uh, the Bible, uh, un, unlike theology and, and Christian philosophy. <clears throat> That's not true. The the Bible to the, to misuse the Bible for uh, to try to use it for physical science things so for you know certain maybe uh, archaeological clues that one can find in the stuff it's it's not uh, helpful it's the the book of nature is the book that one goes to for uh, the physical sciences so the the bible is not a book teaching you about geology and biology and things but it's teaching you how to live uh, teaching you how uh, to be open to the coming of God in your life. And uh, that's if you rightly interpret it, of course, and apply the Holy Scripture. Consequently, methodical research on all branches of knowledge, provided it is carried out in a truly scientific manner and does not override moral laws, can never conflict with the faith. So you could say, so when people try to do that, the, the uh, go against that, uh, the Galileo case is brought, often brought up about that. Um, again, that was a misuse of scripture as, 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 as a, a cosmology thing, uh, a physical cosmology thing. As, uh, Galileo was supposed to say, the Bible tells us how to get to heaven, not how the heavens go. So, and... Uh, Someone once said there's a mutually exclusive uh, magisteria in that thing. But uh, here it points out that you, know, that you can't use the sciences to break, uh, claim to use the sciences to break moral law. So like, there's like uh, uh, those who say, oh, uh, the Catholic Church has to revise all its teachings on sexuality, uh, uh, in the light of, of uh, social sciences and even physical sciences. But, well, that isn't the case. The physical sciences are not asking us to revise our moral theology. 
it's uh, people with an agenda. <coughs> uh, outside, you know, who are functionally outside the church, if not. Uh, but um, I won't say anything about Cardinal Hollenbach or anything right now. But um, <coughs> we have to. Uh, Because the things of this of the world and the things of faith derive from the same God. The humble and persevering investigator of the secrets of nature is being led. So we have to be humble in this. And the same thing, even we have to be even great, greater humility in seeking the uh, the teachings of God and Holy Scripture and tradition of the Church. The humble and persevering investigator of the secrets of nature is being led, as it were, by the hand of God in spite of himself. For it is God, the conservator of all things, who made them what they are. Again, uh, that's uh, documents of Vatican II, uh, Gaudium et Spes, 36, 1. And let's see... In the commentary, the Catechism of the Catholic Church, Archbishop Rino Finiscala, what he has to say. But, uh, well, I think that's it. The certainty of faith. Here we are. This is page 649. Without this certainty, one cannot conceive the act of believing. And this is uh, the Catechism of the Catholic Church with Theological Commentary, edited by Archbishop Rino Finiscella, who is the uh, <coughs> the one who has added this article, written this article. And it's published by Our Sunday Visitor in English, uh, 2019, I think. Yeah, 2019. A Sunday visit at 200 Noel Plaza, Huntington, Indiana. So, so he says, really no one could carry out a definitive act based on a premise that as such appears provisional and uncertain. So if I act in uncertainty, on so it's, it's going to fizzle. <clears throat> Life would be marked with its negative traits and would develop in the shadow of instability and hence contain doubt and anguish. So this isn't saying you don't test everything and continue to test things. But uh, if, uh, the otherwise you're cultivating anguish in, in everything. If just The certainty of faith is based on knowledge of the truth. So it has to be a faith based on <coughs> uh, a verifiable truth. Not just feeling or or uh, my uh, subjective experience. The certainty of faith is based on knowledge of the truth acquired in the very act which, with which one believes. So it is fitting for catechesis to value some elements that are the particular possession of Christian tradition under this aspect. First among them is the theme of truth. The Christian world conceives truth. This is towards the end, end of the page, 649. The Christian world conceives truth as the manifestation and revelation of God in a historical event, in particular the incarnation and death and resurrection of Christ, which brings with it the characteristic of final fulfillment. The biblical conception of aletheia, truth, not only means manifestation, but much more. It expresses... For, First of all, the fidelity of the Lord to the promise he has made. <coughs> Truth for biblical men essentially equates confor confirming what the Lord, that the Lord is a God who keeps his promises, the promises he has made, because man experiences it directly in his personal history. In a word, he understands the truth in light of the revelation. God makes in history. So, the Judeo-Christian, the uh, Judeo-Christian slash Islamic slash Baha'i, Baha the Abrahamic uh, 
God concept is a God in history, not, uh, not a God of mythic ages, uh, but a God who's in history, and in particular the Christian. Because remember, the creed mentions he suffered under Pontius Pilate, a, a, a historical personage uh, in a historical time, in a historical situation. So, uh, so uh, we see that in a God... God's intervention in history, as we see, you know, in the, the revelations that he gives in the old law and in the fullness we see in the new law and the new covenant in Jesus Christ. God gives it history an eschatological direction. So it's not this cycle, <coughs> this endlessly repeating cycle or spiral, often downward spiral. But rather, there's a, a a trajectory to history, which is to, uh, the call to fulfillment in God, which is heaven. But we can opt for hell. <coughs> Giving it an eschatological direction that aims towards a definitive encounter with him, with God. In the Christian perspective, therefore, truth cannot prescind from the supporting idea, it is conceived as an event of revelation that will be ever fuller and more total, but which for the moment has traits of bit hiddenness because no one can see God and remain alive, Exodus 33.20. So in Christian thought, the truth is united for the first time with temporal and historical categories. So we'll... Let's stop there and let's pray the, the Our Father. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from evil. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And let's push the finish button.